Go ahead. Hi, welcome to our Thursday night live stream. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and every Monday we go live on Keto Beyond the Couch because life exists beyond the couch. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website which is twocrazyketos.com and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Echo now. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon in that way every single time we, we start off a live stream wonky. You'll be alerted to it. Okay, so I gotta fix this because something's not. Something open. is not right. How are you guys doing? We are like in day five of the new year. Are you still resolved in this new year? That's yeah. my question. Are you, you know, resolved? Yes. You know, resolved? this was all set up before we sat down. I don't believe it. It was. I, I don't believe it. Oh, thank you. It's, Evelyn says I look beautiful. It's because the computer went into a sleep mode. I got my hair did the, this afternoon because we're back to getting to see people yes. starting in just one weekend. Not this weekend, but next weekend is our first meetup. First yeah. 2KK meetup with an M-E-A-T. And I'm excited. And I thought, I need to get this mop on my head trimmed. And when I go to the beauty parlor, the lady was like, Rachel, it's too long. Why do you wait too long? And I'm like, it's it's hard for me to like buy a store-bought haircut. But aren't you proud? I, n I never touched my bangs. Thank you. During this season. Pound it. Pound it. Thank Usually you I try to kind of like stretch a haircut, but giving myself a little mini haircut, and that's never and a good idea. And I'm not a big fan of bangs. Never a good idea for me. I love bangs, but like I need to make sure that a professional does it, not me trying to perm my own hair. Meanwhile, I didn't want to come in here because I'm in the middle of binge watching Yellowstone. I have and lost him to Kevin Costner, y'all. Anybody it's else? It's good. Anybody else like Yellowstone? Any other Yellowstone I'm fans? I'm seven episodes into the second season in just four days. I have not seen one episode of this yet because as soon no, as I fall asleep. No, she just keeps asleep, coming and keeps asking me, can you explain the show? I keep falling asleep. In the middle of it, yes, but that is that is definitely a Rachel thing that I don't watch the show, but I expect that I get like um, seasonal updates. Chris is saying the video is fuzzy. I can't change any settings. Stream settings. It Let's says it's see. it's setting. It's going in HD. Who knows? Robin says no because I won't pay for it. Yes, he actually. Well, I found you bought Peacock. No, we get you signed Peacock, up. We for get Peacock. Peacock for free, but then there was the thing through American Express where you got the ad-free version for a year, and I ended up paying like twenty-five dollars for the whole year. I'm willing to pay it for that. Brian says it's the best show since West Wing. Now you are speaking mm, Joe's language. I don't know about that because he loved West Wing. I did love West Wing, but honestly. I think one of the greatest TV shows ever made. Oh, don't say it again. MASH. No. That's oh, just the greatest else? ending. Okay. Sons of Anarchy. Sons of Anarchy, yes. Do you know why Sons of Anarchy was so good? Yeah. Do you know why? Because it, it was a clear ending. Because Kurt Sutter knew the day he wrote episode one, he knew how he was going to end it. Yeah. So there was no... Does Yellowstone have a clear ending already? I don't know. I'm only in the second season. There was no, we're going to ride this horse until like nobody wants Yellowstone. to watch it and we're going to end it. Ride the horse. I'm talking, I'm talking more about like, um, let's see, some zombie shows. I feel like Lost was the same it way. Got Lost. You know, like, we, we're just going to ride the show. Anyway, we're not here to talk about TV shows. I do want to talk, talk about, about keto. Yes, and I want to talk about some mail. We got mail today, and Joe is actually wearing a piece of our mail because yes. we were so excited when we saw this. This is from Lynette. Lynette, thank you so much. She says, Dear Joe and Rachel, for three and a half years, I have been following you on YouTube, lurking, rarely commenting. The vlogs, inspirational posts, keto beyond the couch, the sausage making have all kept me strong. Well, now it's my turn to give back. On a recent trip to Wisconsin to visit relatives, I visited the new Johnsonville Marketplace slash gift shop. It is a meat lover's paradise. I'm super jealous because I want to go there now. I thought of you two immediately and 
enjoy. Looking forward to meeting you in April at KetoCon. Well, Lynette, we're excited to see you at KetoCon. Look this at this. It says, oh, you still have your little sticker on there. It says, life, liberty, and the pursuit of encased meat. Love it. And I had already gotten dressed when we had, uh, I got the shirt, but I'm going to wear this in an upcoming video. You're the worst. I love w -U -R -S -T. it. W-U-R-S-T. I love it. And then she also got us some playing cards that says brat. Because brat. Like, that's a good game, right? Brat. Yeah. I love it. Thanks so much, Lynette. We um, love it. Um, I saw somebody said Yellowstone is like the Breaking Bad of the Wild West. I would agree. Rachel's really? trying to ask me. She's asking me about it, and I'm like, it's hard to explain. But it's like it anyway. basically like Kevin Costner. He's the guy that you want to like, but he's got some bad tendencies. Very much like Breaking Bad. True. So, anyway, if you are new here, our Thursday night live streams are pretty much ask us anything. Go what ahead and ask like us to anything talk about. within reason you want to talk about. We let the, the chat dictate where we're going. So if you have any keto questions, <gasps> carnivore questions, anything like that, don't look ahead, please. I'll hold it. What? Can I hold it or should I say it? Should I Go hold ahead. it? Okay. Denise said, ooh, hubby bought her tickets to KetoCon for her birthday tomorrow. Very cool. Can we sing happy birthday? Yes. Or do I have to wait? You have to wait. Okay. No. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy birthday, dear Denise. Happy birthday to you and many more. So excited. That means that we get to see you. I'm so excited about that. That is really cool. He says, I'm excited that they're working on the first nine spinoff for Sons of Anarchy. Really? Well, I mean... You've been watching Mayans. the I, Mayans. I, I, I'm caught up to Mayans. Mayans yeah. is a spinoff of yeah. Sons of Anarchy. Oh, cool. But anyway, so yeah, you know, I may not even be able to make the meetup because I am doing a 120-foot dive next Thursday about four hours before we're going to the meetup. I'm going to dive the Lady Luck, which is sitting in 120 feet of water. A wreck. I may be too tired. You may be wrecked. I may be too tired to drive to Orlando on Well, Thursday. guess what? I'm going without you. That's why we have two vehicles, okay? Because I am not missing out on the January 13th and 14th meetup in Orlando. If you live in the South Florida area or Orlando area, it's not too late for you to it's sign up and Florida. come. It's Central Florida. You know, so it's if you live anywhere in Florida, Florida, that's why it's in Central Florida. Florida's everywhere. Right. Okay. So it's Mighty Meetup 2023 at gmail.com if you want to get on the list so that we know you're coming. Everybody that comes is going to, it's a free event. We're just meeting for, for something to eat. And everybody that comes is getting a nice swag bag. A nice swag bag. And I'm just going to shout out really, really quickly. Keto Chow, Element, Carnivore Crisp, Perfect Keto, Chalk Zero, Moon Cheese, Enlightened, mm. and Egg Life Wrapped. Thank you so much for sponsoring this event with some goodies. Why are you goodies. making people feel bad if they can't come? Well, pff, need to come. Or here's the thing. If you can't come to our meetup, Go to a meetup in your local yes. area. Go to lowcarbevents.com and find out what's coming around to a, a place by me. Can we get into the chat? Go for it. So Exposing Darkness wants Hi. to know from Chris, is Maple Waffle coming back? And I love Chris's answer. Miriam has not decided to make any announcements yet. Oh, wow. <laughs> Just we, throw Miriam right under the bus. We need to get into that position where Joe says, I can't say anything unless... My wife says it first because she's the boss, right? Like, we need to get to that level. Okay. Where Ethel like, said, hello from the Oregon coast. Happy Hi. Happy New Year to everyone. Happy New Year, everybody. If, you, if you're if you just catching this and this is your first live and we didn't get to say Happy New Year on Monday, Happy New Year. April. It still counts. We're only Better five days in. grab some coffee. It's time for the Rachel and Joe. Yay. Thanks for being here. We're going to jump down. No sound because these are all from beforehand. Uh, Carrie said Rachel needs a bigger mug of coffee. Now, is in her defense, it's only half full. Is there a bigger mug of coffee than what I'm capable of achieving with this? One cup of coffee. Esther said, I have my Ninja Creamy, but nothing I've made has enough flavor. It's good and texture's great. Creamy. 
Um, so freezing, if you're making keto chow, freezing does tend, well, with any ice cream, freezing tends to mute the flavor. Some people like to add some allulose to it. I personally like it just the way it is. It also really comes down to the flavor. I think some flavors are better than others. Right. Yeah, that's just, yeah. I mean, I, I like all of the keto chow flavors, just some flavors really seem to come off better as far as flavor inside of the creamy. Uh... What is this? 65 Sandra. Hi. Is keto the same for type 2 diabetics as for type 1? Type 1s have to Good do question. things a little different because now we are not doctors, nurses, or health professionals. I love when he says type that. Type 1s do need to do things a little bit different because they have to dose their insulin. And uh, many times they are going to have to very closely monitor that because as they do keto, um, they are going to probably have to adjust dose very, very quickly. Yes. Otherwise, they could easily end up with severely low blood sugars because if they continue to dose based on their old diet, You're be their standard amazed American diet, and how quickly things it, it turn could around. It can happen within a few days. But overall, you can do keto on, as a type 1 or a type 2 diabetic. It's going to help both. Obviously, if you're a type 1, it's going to help a type one not have to dose as much insulin. Um, but as far as how to do keto, it's pretty much the same. Now I will say just a little public service announcement. If you have started keto and if you are particularly participating in the carnivore challenge for World Carnivore Month, or you are participating in our triple B and E challenge course, um, keep your eyes on your meds. Keep your eyes on your levels because like Joe is saying, things happen quickly and it, you'd be amazed at how much forward momentum you have in your health journey, like in a very short amount of time in this first 30 days, a lot of things can change. What are you looking at, sir? I'm looking at that, I don't know, I mean, we have a really good connection with zero drop frames, but it does have we low We do look quality. like fuzzy. We have low quality. But I can't really seem to fix that here. Don't know. Work with what we got, friends. Stream health is excellent. Stream settings. You know, we can't get to the chat if you don't well, focus on the chat. Well, people are complaining that we look fuzzy. Oh, I'm sorry. So. I, we are fuzzy. We're a little we're a little cloudy with a chance of meatballs Chris said, if the video is funny, try and manually change the video quality settings on your computer. It might be set low. Okay, so he's talking about other people. Because I know, like... We're streaming well, but I can't really tell. It also could be my glasses because I'm looking at it at an angle. Marion said, I'm really excited to see everybody I, next week. I need it. You know, it's kind of nice to be like, okay, we did like the holidays and you have like the family together and like you're in your home a lot. But like, I am ready for people, yo. Are you ready for people? Yes. I am so stinking ready for people. Like I'm ready for this year to start. So do you want to tell people what happened yesterday that you couldn't do? I knew this was going to happen. I was going to save it for Fearless Friday, but we could talk about it now. Just people I know. I'm hoping that this will bless somebody in their keto journey, even if they are a couple or like a group of friends that's doing keto. Okay. So y'all know that we have been in a scuba saga. I We are trying to get certified and a couple dives under our belt before we go on the low carb cruise this year. Very excited about that. All right. So Joe, who has a past in diving, is now like so excited, even more enthusiastic about scuba diving. Because I get to do it with Rachel. Because now we've got a buddy and we're healthy enough to do it. Because let me tell you, scuba is a workout, all right? You are tired after like a good long day of swimming around. I went, I went, I did two dives yesterday and I was diving nitrox and did I get a workout? First of all, we were swimming against the current. And uh, we, when we surfaced, we had to wait 45 minutes for the boat to pick us up, and we were in like 10 foot seas. Yeah. So that was kind of interesting. But I got a workout. I came home and I crashed, and I was he diving was nitrox, which means higher oxygen levels, and I yeah. was I crashed hard. So we went this week to do like the first leg of it, like first leg Rachel's of my first open water, stuff. open water like certification portion of it. All right, and I have never been in a situation where I was more than like in like 10 feet of water. I could always touch the bottom of whatever. Like I've swam my whole life, but usually I swim in a place where I could touch the bottom and like surface quickly if I need to. Even in snorkeling situations, I haven't like snorkeled very deep, okay? 
So we have to go down deep and I'm having a hard time equalizing. And we're not in an airplane. I can't chew some gum and like pop my ears, right? So I want to make this happen fast because like Joe's not having a problem. There are the, the dive instructor's not having a problem. And I'm like, I want to make this happen quickly. Acclimate quickly. And so I'm sort of forcing the issue, but... She equalized too hard. Too hard. And wound then continued up continued the dive. Wound up hurting my ear over here and getting water in it. And it has been stuck all day. So if I'm talking louder than I'm supposed to, I'm sorry. Well, you said it's better now. It's this a little bit better, ago. but it's still a little stopped up. So right. everybody's been commenting that I'm like yelling at them to talk because I can't hear myself talk. Right. So I thought this will preach because I want to please everyone and be at the same level as everybody else in my party. All right. But the guy that guys that we're diving with, he dove for like 10 years. The dive instructor has been 33 years. This is day one for me. I shouldn't expect that I can jump into something at the same with the same velocity as somebody else. So just because you're seeing a feed in your Instagram that's like, keto is like, you gotta be as hardcore as possible. And you're like, oh, should I like force myself into carnivore if this is like week one of keto for me? Like I'm literally coming from the standard American diet and I need to be like running with the big folks here. Right. Like, no. And if you try to make things happen faster than they're going Lots to happen. Say, yeah, I thought you were just super excited. <laughs> you're gonna hurt yourself. I hurt myself. I hurt myself, right? Because I was trying to make fast track things. Yeah. So just kind of a PSA. Which should be fine. I mean, it's already fixing itself. But so we were supposed to do boat dive yesterday. And I couldn't uh, go. We were supposed to dive um, a couple of different reefs off the coast. And it's honestly good that she didn't go because we were in the group of people. Half of the boat was heaving. I wasn't because I don't ever. There were some rough seas, so they were barfing um, on the boat. We half it was some pretty rough seas getting out to the inlet, but then we did our dives, and like I said, the first the dive master said, "Hey, we did a drift dive, which means they throw you over the side of the boat." Well, I mean, you jump in. You jump in. They don't. Talk. And then it's not like walk the plank. They basically you're supposed to you go underwater, you drift for an hour, 45 minutes to an hour. And then they know because the current's going this way, this is where you're going to pop up and you've got a flag and they follow the flag. So the captain goes, hey, listen, the the current is going south or the current is going north. So just head north. So we jump in. Well, guess what? The current on the top was going north, but the current down on the bottom was going south. And we ended up south along with a lot of other people. And it took 45 minutes for the boat to come pick us up. So we're bobbing in 10 to 15 foot seas, me and two people that I'm diving with. Rachel, for her first dive. That would not have been a good experience. Would not have had a good experience. But yeah, so, but she was like, hey, you go out. We already paid for the boat trip. So why don't you just go out? And I had a great time. Came across about a 250 pound Goliath grouper. Wow. Uh, did not have a spear gun, but we found some lionfish. And some lobsters. And, and the good news good is, time, is that we're going to... Rachel's got Rachel's to go back next week now. We're going to try to get, like, footage as much as we can. And Joe is starting to, like, collect some footage. Because it really is beautiful to get to see some of these sea creatures yeah. that are, like... Except for I can't film you crazy. right now when we're out with him because you can't film... You know, instructing lessons, In insurance. Since I wasn't being instructed yesterday, I was you able can to get pop footage. out my stuff. But next Thursday, I'm doing a deep water dive. Rachel has no interest in diving. I have zilcho interest in deep water diving. So I'm gonna go on a 120 foot dive. So y'all pray, and I'll be diving probably regular air because it's 120 feet. I don't know. We'll have to say, uh, Annabella. Rachel, forgive my ignorance. You have such a pretty accent. What part of America are you from? Thank you so much. I am Take a photo. This is a rare incidence. You I am really actually from Florida. I am a seventh Not just from Florida. Seventh generation, seven generations in Florida. And this is this is a state 
where nobody's actually from here. It's kind of like Northern Virginia. Northern Virginia is like the 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 headquarters for like a lot of headquarters of places of like different things. So it's like no one, it was always a joke. No one's from Northern Virginia. When we lived in Northern Virginia, it was like, we would all get together for Thanksgiving, like a collective group of people who are like from someplace else for Thanksgiving. But yeah, I am from uh, Florida. I was actually born in the same hospital my mom was even born in. And it's amazing. I consider myself a Floridian, by the way. If you've been here. For- I've been, I've lived in Florida longer than I lived in New York. We I lived grandfather in New York for you 25 in. years. I've lived in Florida now for 27 years. That so is the migration process. as I'm concerned, process. I'm a Floridian. Yeah. Plus, my father was born and raised in Miami. He say so he got married. He moved to New York. I got married. I moved to Florida. Did you tell him that that was the wrong direction? You're supposed to go New York to Florida, not Florida, New York. Yeah. And then my mom was born in Wisconsin, but then they quickly moved to Florida, and so they both they both my parents went to the same high school, which is amazing. My my parents went well, to back rival then there was high really schools. only one high school in the Miami area. There was like one major high school, Miami Edison High School. It's amazing, like how Florida has. Um, changed so much in such a small amount of time. So my mom is in her early 70s and she grew up in downtown Fort Lauderdale, like as downtown as you can think of it. You know, think of like Elvis Presley on the beach, the elbow room, some of those like beach blanket bingo type of movies. But when she was born in 1949, their house in downtown Fort Lauderdale had an outhouse. Like, I mean, you're talking major metropolitan area, but like it was, I mean, and, and right where we're living you was like nothing here. It's just amazing. Florida has changed a lot. Okay. Blank's got a good question. Doing your beef, butter, bacon, and egg course. Yay. Wondering how you two felt about your round of beef, butter, bacon, and egg. And, and keto, keto chow. chow. I'm struggling with my own keto household. Not only am I eating drastically different, I have no treats. Um, well, let's address that part first. The I have no treats is kind of the point. Yeah. Okay. The whole idea of this is you're really eliminating everything so that you can learn what's affecting you and what's not affecting you. You can learn um, how to get in touch with your satiety and all of that. So you're really, you're only supposed to be eating when you're truly authentically hungry and not treating yourself with it's like a snack. Anything. Honestly, we should never use food as a treat anyway. I'd rather you treat yourself some other way. Um, but like aside, a haircut. Like some but aside from that, so how do we I enjoyed beef butter bacon egg and keto child. The only thing is is you have to remember when we did that, we had already identified that we did not have any issues with keto chow. One of the major things that you are eliminating in beef, butter, bacon, egg is dairy. Dairy. Keto chow does have dairy in it. So if you're trying to identify some things that may be affecting you and you reintroduce dairy now, you don't know if you have a problem with dairy. Right. Um, So I would encourage you, if you are really trying to accomplish everything that beef, butter, bacon, egg does, I would encourage you to try to stick out 30 days. Yeah, and Without. just know, okay, it's really and we hard. Love keto chow. It's really to hard. My coffee. It's really hard in the moment, but like in thirty days. And I will say, um, I was going to actually pose a question to the chat. Um, if are you guys? Is anybody noticing already five days in one of two things that you clearly drink more caffeine than you thought you did, whether it is diet soda or it is tea or it is coffee or anything like this. Like you thought, I think I'm pretty good with my caffeine. But then once you're trying to rein back your coffee experiences, you're noticing headaches and I'm irritable and all of that. That's not the beef. It's probably the caffeine. Like we have to detox the amount of caffeine. (coughs) The other thing I was going to ask is, or if you are trying to tighten up things and like um, do more meat, are you realizing that maybe you had more carbs? Maybe you were keto and now you're trying to do more of a a carnivore or triple B&E protocol. Are you noticing already five days in like, dang, I clearly had worked in more total carbohydrates than I realized. Chris said, not all keto chow is dairy. That That's is right. True. Now there is there you the go. keto chow core. This is the unsweetened version, which yeah. we really like. Um, somebody actually asked, I just saw it, um, 
Joanna said, I could tell Joe wasn't from Florida. Your accent. I'm a North Jersey girl and can tell a tri-state accent ever. See, it's funny because I used to have a, a really bad New York accent. I worked really hard to get rid of that accent because when I, before, long before Rachel, when I was first moving to Florida, I learned that nobody trusts New Yorkers. So I, and I, since I traveled the I country. I trust you. Not always. I traveled the country in sales. And so I worked really hard to like mask my New York accent because Aww. nobody trusts New Yorkers. So somebody wanted to know, it keeps jumping, but somebody wanted to know what about pork rinds for a treat on beef butter bacon egg. To me, un, just unflavored pork rinds, just plain salted pork rinds are fine. But again, they should be with meal because you're not supposed to be snacking right. on beef butter bacon and egg. Therefore, it wouldn't be a treat. It would just be pork rinds would just be part, part of, of your, your meal. meal. So you're having some hamburger patties, some eggs, some pork rinds, Joyce wants hot to know, dogs. how much is the meetup? There is no charge for the meetup other than any what you food want that to you buy to eat. to eat in the in the. We're going to a barbecue place that sells barbecue by the pound. Um, we're paying for the room, so it's just, if you want to eat, you got to buy the food. Yeah. You know, other than that, there is uh, no charge. I all. got a store-bought haircut this week. We don't have money to, like, be able to pay for everybody's food. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Denise said, have you thought about brown butter bites? Um, and again, just, if you want to do beef butter bacon egg properly, you shouldn't be snacking. Therefore, just keep it the all together with the meal. needs to be with the meal. So if you want to have a little something. Have a hamburger. Hey, different. Brown butter. Have brown butter bites with rinds. your meal. But you shouldn't have be eating anything in between meals. The whole idea is two or three or even four meals every time eating until you are full. The first few days, as Dr. Barry said, you should be uncomfortably full. And I will say, though, if you're somebody that is like me and drinks coffee in mugs like this, and then you go to one coffee experience because you're trying to not, we're trying to not do what we did in the past, which is, shut up, stomach, you're not actually hungry. Let me just throw a beverage down there, and that's good enough so that you don't eat, right? So that's part of what we're trying to address with triple B and E. But that means I'm not having two pots of coffee every single day and the caffeine addict in me is a little bit ticked off about it so i find that the the first 12 days of triple b and e or carnivore while you are trying to get rid of all of the extra carbs that you don't even realize that you consume in a day and deal with your caffeine levels those are 12 tough days yeah you're detoxing Yep. From more than you realize. That's why everything should be 30 days. Whatever challenge you do, anytime you're trying to determine things, 30 days. Like seven days isn't enough time. Yeah. Christina said, thank you both for it being, for being so inspiring. Aww. I love your videos. Rachel and Joe, you're so motivating. I've been carnivore for five years now. Currently on the line diet wow. for the first time. You keep me going. Way to go, Christina. That's awesome. What are some of the health results? that you've already seen after, for doing this for so long? What are some of the, the, the health, like the reversals in health that you've even experienced? And Robin said, I've been hungry all the time last month, so I've been eating three times a day instead awesome. of two. I really hate feeling that way. Sounds good. That's um, good. And again, eat, eat till you're full, um, eat protein, eat more protein. If, anybody who's doing an 80-20 thing, 80-20 doesn't mean lower your protein. Right. It means increase your fat. Okay. Yeah. I'm not necessarily big into 80-20. I'm not into counting anything. Eat, eat your food, add fat to feel better, to help you go from one meal to the next. But if you're done eating and you feel like you're still hungry 10 minutes later, you need to eat more protein. And then you can yeah. add more fat from there. Protein but fills need, you up we, you in the meal and fat satiate you between meals. Yes. So you need both. Yes. You're not, you cannot white knuckle and be like, I really got full with like high protein and like not having fat Don't in the meal. Don't lower your protein in order to achieve an 80-20 ratio. Exactly. Increase your fat if you are doing 80-20. Yeah. Um, but don't lower your protein. Chris said, if you can't come to the Florida meetup, virtually join the Utah meetup yes! in February. Yes, we are we going to be, be going to Utah in February, and it's going to be so stinking fun. Joe is going to be at the Low Carb Boca. We'll miss Yay! meeting everyone. Yeah, because it's on the same day. Yeah. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what is this one? Transforming Melody. What hey. are the dates for the meetup? It is next Friday 13th and Saturday. And 14th. Yeah. And again, it's... 
It's not a two day meetup. It's just we're gonna Each go, night. we're going to Orlando, and the way Chris set it up was because we didn't know how many people Chris were Miller come, um, that we since the since the um, venue place that the restaurant only has enough room for fifty people. We basically just said we will go for two days, and so you can come on Friday. You can come on. You can come for both days. You can if both. You want. Just let us know so we make sure that yeah, we've got. Yeah, you just got to let Chris know so she has a good head count. To and again, that is Mighty Meet Up Twenty Twenty Three at Gmail dot com. That's going to like alert Chris Miller, um, who's helping to organize this, that that you come in so we can look for you. Um. Okay. Let's see. Radical Geek says hey, we're going to have another Keto Ohio on February 25th, weather, weather permitting. permitting. That is awesome. See, I mean, there are like meetups popping over all over the place, which is awesome. <laughs> uh, John said, Rachel, you're getting closer to that coffee cup from Facebook. Oh, yeah. The one that's like, just one cup. Like, I'm down to one cup a day. Jackie. Um, got me that cup, and I have it in my kitchen. You always see it, like, behind us. It's up above the cabinetry that says, like, I'm down to one coffee experience a day. It's just the coffee is a planter for a Exposing large Exposing darkness. Any good recipes for root beer keto chow? Mm. Yes. Add creamy root beer zevia to it. Yes. Oh, my gosh, that tastes so good. Especially if you turn it into ice cream. Turn it into ice cream and then pour a creamy root beer, like a zevia over it. Yes. Yeah. Joanne, what are your what flavors in your opinion taste best than Ninja Creamy? Um, pistachio. Raspberry cheesecake, pistachio, uh, caramel macchiato. Um, Shameless plug. Unfortunately, I want to tell you maple waffle. Maple waffle. Um, chocolate toffee. <gasps> chocolate toffee. Yes. If you want to know as much as like the one that I think makes the Chris might see what Chris thinks, but I think the one that makes the absolute best taste texture, chocolate peanut butter is chocolate peanut butter chocolate because peanut butter. of the extra fat in the peanut butter. Yeah. But it all just comes through. Evelyn said, I tried the brown butter bites. How dark should your butter get before it's ruined? Good question. It's, it's kind of watch and see. Yeah. Um, preference, personal preference. I just, I, I'm, I don't make a lot of brown butter because I just don't ne have a need to it. I like regular butter anyway. And to me, brown butter is pretty much close to ghee. And we just use a lot of ghee. Because yeah. ghee is just clarified butter that's taken to that browning point, to that toasty point. You get that toasty flavor in you there. You know what my favorite part of the process but is? It's kind of like you know. It's, there's no other way for me to really explain. My it. favorite thing is when we are working towards making ghee and you get like all the little milk droplets. Rachel eats the milk solids. The milk solids that like rise to the top. Let me tell you, that that you scoop out of the top, it's so salty and milky. It is delicious. Like I prefer those little things on top to pretty much anything. Like that's... It's pretty bad. It's very tasty. Oh, a lot of people saying it's not fuzzy. Oh, so good. You, you two and all the freeze drying make me want one. <laughs> we we really are enjoy, enjoying that freeze dryer. We are. It's we been are. fun experimenting with it. The only problem with the freeze dryer, it's not a problem with the freeze dryer. It is just if you are a person that is not very good at waiting, freeze drying, it takes 24 to 36 hours for most batches. But you know what? You know what built up our tolerance for that? The sous vide. Yeah. The sous vide, bringing it up and like waiting for that. I mean, we've sous vide things like more than 24 hours. Yeah. So like you're used to like, this is going to taste so delicious. Like the best things come to those who wait. Oh, good. Joyce said, Barry and I will be there on Friday. How do I sign up again? Mighty Meetup 2023 at gmail.com. Send a an email to this email. Send a message that just said, hi, I'm Joyce and I'm married to Barry and we are the most awesome, coolest people ever because Joyce and Barry are the yeah. coolest people ever. And and just say like, we're going to be coming on Friday. And then that way we we know you're, you're on your way. But now I know that you're coming. I'm going to be looking for you on Friday, Joyce. Chris said we're streaming 60 frames per second instead of 30. I don't know why. It's not how I have... And it might have something to do with the 810 Mini. I'll have to look at the 810 Mini. Uh, Yolanda. Hey. I'm a new subscriber to your channel, but not new to keto. I'm looking Welcome. forward to learning some new things. Awesome. Well, let us know if there's any questions that you have that we can answer, you know, tonight. Uh, let's see. Nisha did a video on brown butter bites. Yeah, she put it up the other day. 
And again, she said, like, listen, this is nothing new. It was just her making it. Yeah, Chris said, the saga of scuba. The never-ending story. Rachel felt so ah. bad. And my friend who is an instructor was just like, it's fine. It is it is very common for people to hurt their ear on the first time. I hate being a bother. Is that it? That's like the 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 worrying about what other people's expectations are of me puts a lot of pressure on me and like I always feel like if I'm the slowest person in my party, then I'm upsetting the other party members. And usually it's not true. Maybe somebody else can find freedom in this moment. Like if you're thinking like, well, I need to make things happen because like I'm bothering people with how like slow that I'm moving and accomplishing things. Don't worry about it. Nobody is like, you don't need to put that pressure on yourself. You yeah. don't need to hurt yourself like I did in order to like try to make other people happy who don't even have that expectation of you. Right. It's just pressure that we don't need. Christina said, do you have meetups in the summer months, July and August? I'm a teacher and have off then. Would love ah. to meet you both. So this is the first one. We've never had a meetup before. Never done we it before. We go to a lot of conferences. Yeah. And so that's where we get to meet people and hang out with people. Um, if you are in Florida and you're looking for something in the summer months, the very first weekend of August, there is the Keto Orlando Summit, which yes. is pretty inexpensive. And really fun. And uh, so we will be there. Obviously, we are in Florida. Uh, it was a really good conference, especially if you're into community. Very, very good conference. Very great conference. Uh, Linda, oh, Joe, that's a deep dive for sure. The deepest I've done is 125 feet through brain coral Ooh. that stood 10 stories <gasps> high. It was amazing to see the sea life decompressed in stages of core. Wow, that is cool. So I, the guy I'm going with is he actually trains instructors and um, he actually was part of the sinking of the Lady Lock. So that's always got to be special for him to be like, I was there when this was not a reef or not something that people were exploring, but right. on top of the water. Yeah. The Before this, the deepest I've ever been was, it was like 115 feet in New York. And it was funny trying to explain to Rachel the other day in a lake. I'm like, see this visibility, which was horrible. It was like five feet. I'm like, this is like how I learned how to dive because the visibility in New York, Long Island was horrible. And still you did it. I still did it. So wow. then when you get in, in the water yesterday and we were at 54 feet of water and you can look up and you can actually see the surface. You can right. see the boat over the top of us. Uh, Annabella, I'm short, so I rarely touch the bottom. Oh, that's cute. Like, yeah. So you have to, or you have to stay in very shallow waters. Janice, I'm already struggling. Hey, I can't fix the beef worth yeah, eating made hamburgers. So, uh, someone tries, said, put butter on it. And it was totally better. I need a meal plan. Okay. Um, well, you could you could email us like or message us in Mighty Networks, Janice, and we could talk about like what what you think would work for you. Let us know like what are some of the you know what are some of the the meats that that you enjoy eating. Let's see if we can brainstorm a plan. Highland Honey, hubby is certified scuba diver, but I am not fond of deep water. So no big lakes, no seas, no ocean. I'm kind of in that same place. I know that eventually I will work my way up to being able to do like boat dives and that kind of thing. But right now, like I've got to take this one step at a time yeah. and kind of slow myself and I'm going to get certified, but my goal is to do beach dives. Yeah. Because wants to do mostly beach dives. Because the deep water ups, like is, is a little bit overwhelming for me right now. Yeah. Now we actually have a reef here called the nursery right off of Fort Lauderdale. Sounds right up my alley. And the nursery sits in 15 to 30 feet of water. It's a natural, it's a reef. Uh, I think it's a man-made reef, but they have, it's known because uh, it's got a whole bunch of nurse sharks and they used to feed them before it became illegal to feed them. So all of the nurse sharks just show up there and you can literally, you can snorkel or scuba dive it and jump in the water and literally pet the nurse sharks. They literally nurse will sharks, come up and just, you can pet the nurse sharks. They're not like a great white. But it, yeah, but it's only, it's sitting shark. in 15, to, it's, the reef starts at 15 feet of water. The deepest part of the reef is 30 feet. Now we so talk. That's a good place. Like for me, you know, when Rachel went out, even the other day in the lake, we were at 32 feet, but she didn't realize it. She, she's just like, so long as you don't tell me how deep I am, but she's like, I don't want to start at six. I need to start and then work my way down to the deep part. And God bless. It's like, as Joe 
and the the dive instructor is trying to calm my nerves with information. The information- We're making it worse by going, hey, did you know that you were in 32 feet of water? And they're like, you're doing so good. You were in 30 feet of water. And I'm like, wait, what? And they're like, now we're gonna get back in and do it again. Well, no, no, no. Well, why wouldn't you wanna do it again? We just did it. And I'm like, because now I know how deep it was. You've told me the odds. What is What does Han Solo say? Never tell me the odds. Don't tell me. I don't need like, all of the information, right? Like, yes. Angela, sometimes Rachel, you cannot rip the bandaid off. Take care and take your time. Thank you. Take. I appreciate that. And yeah, it's like, I, I was going to try to make it happen, but this is supposed to be a leisure activity. This is supposed to be like part of enjoying the journey. And I am like keto beyond the couch. Like I'm off the couch, but that doesn't mean that like paddle boarding, we were up and at it. And I feel like I was way into it way fast. Biking, up and at it, way into it way fast. So I think that I thought every leisure activity would be at that same pace that I'm like, I am all in. Right. And so when I'm like, whoa, 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 wait, I wanna take it a little bit slower. I thought, oh, am I broken? Is something wrong? And it's like, no, it's just, Chris said, I did a drift dive where we had to swim back to the boat. That was a bit tiring. Yeah, we drifted almost a mile. <laughs> <laughs> the cool thing is, is I, we were diving nitrox yesterday and we were down for 45 minutes because the boat for the second dive, we were down for 50 minutes. The boat captain said, hey, you guys, like we want to get back in on time. So every, please try to keep your dive to 45 minutes. But I was down for 45 minutes on the first dive. We were in 50 feet of water. And when we came up, my no decomp time was still 99 minutes. And we came up with, I still had like 1500 PSI. In the second dive, I started with 3100 PSI. We came up with 1300 after 50 minutes. We could have stayed down probably for another 45 minutes. That's the other thing that like didn't really appeal to me, right? Because I'm just like, I'm one of those person, people. She wants people to come up right away. I want to, I don't want to be there down there for an hour right now. Like right now I'm like, it's slowly acclimating to it. So I'm like, when we would do a dive and it was like, you've been down, my watch thing says you've been down for 18 minutes. I'm like, that is more than enough. 18 minutes and I did not you freak out. You completely lose track of time underwater. You say that, but you know yeah. how you know how they say time flies when you're having fun. Well, what is time like when you're sort of scared? Right. Keep feels like a long time. Linda, it's a beautiful Hi. world down under the sea. I love it so much. It's so peaceful, but it can be dangerous and you have to be aware of everything. Another element that is kind of funny is I like to feel like I have some measure of control. I, and, and diving, scuba diving, snorkeling, all those kinds of things is like a treasure hunt, right? The whole goal of it is to be like, hey, I'm down here to just see a couple of reef fish. Oh my goodness, I'm surprised by something extraordinary. Like Joe is watching like tropical fish, tropical fish, tropical fish, little tiny fish, all throughout the dive. And then all of a sudden, seven foot long Goliath no, he grouper. Was he was about he was about th three and a half, four feet long. I want, Everything looks bigger underwater. I want to be surprised by a find in the thrift store or in Home Goods or now, TJ Maxx. Wait a second. I, I don't want to suddenly. He was inside of a thing. The only reason he swam out of that was because one of my dive partners there was a hole on the top of the coral that she and she went in from the top to get him to come out. Once I He was perfectly happy hiding in the hole in the coral. But now every hole in the coral has a giant in it as far as I'm concerned, right? Once I've seen that there are bigger things in here than what I had anticipated, now I assume we are surrounded by giants, right? Like Teresa said, Hubby and I dove a uh, marathon, 100 foot uh, dive. It was neat, wow. but so dark, not as fun as some other dives. That was almost 30 years. Yeah, well, the deeper you go, the darker uh, it gets. Well, the darker it gets, and there's no color. So yeah. you really need flashlights. When you get down to 
80, yeah. 90 feet, even 70 feet, you really need, you need light to really appreciate the color because as you go down, you lose the color because the sun's not touching it. Yeah. I'm like Chris says, he's like, I want to be surprised by a giant lobster. Yes. Mm -hmm. I want to be surprised we by a, a giant lobster. I don't want to be surprised by even a manatee. I, now, if you tell me, hey, Rachel, we're going to swim with the manatees today. I'm like, let me go get my purse and get in the car. Okay. Because I am so ready for it. But if an unscheduled manatee finds his little way into my observation of like tiny fish, now we are upset. Right. That's me. But like, what is scuba diving but a bunch of the unexpected? So Joe is like, oh my gosh, it's so magical. I don't know what I'm going to see. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is horrifying because I don't know what I'm going to see. Linda said lobsters are very strong and those claws hurt. Well, we have spiny lobster down here. And then when I lived in New York, I used to die for lobster. And yeah, those, yeah, like the main lobsters. And yeah, those hurt. But we have spiny lobsters. I will here. say. You, you lasso them or net them. That in anticipation of like future fish we're going to catch. So I ran into hogfish yesterday, but again, we didn't have a spear. Hogfish and lionfish. And, and lionfish, kill as many as you want. You can bring them all home, eat them. Those are the really, fish really good from eating. the Naked Gun movies. Do you remember that? Where well, he sees just the spines. You the spines will be like the worst beast thing you've ever had in your life. But they're an invasive species. They're yeah. not supposed to be here. No, you got to get rid of them. So, right. So anyway, I come back and Rachel's like, did you bring home hogfish? I'm like, I didn't have a spear. And she's like, now I want hogfish. So we go down the street to the seafood store on the ocean where they get all this fresh fish. It was $40 for a two, two pound, pound fish. Two pound fish before filet. So if that doesn't make the case for fishing... Hey guys, if you're interested in like making a case for fishing, you can tell your significant other, I'm saving us money, baby. Like we have to go fishing. We, I'm going to help provide and like whatever, Hey, this long day of fishing that I'm about to do, it's about to save us money because yes, if you can catch the fish yourself, it, it will save money. Esther said, I was afraid of the ocean until I learned to dive. Then I can see. And that helped me. Uh, speaking of costing money, I yes. want to. I highly suggest everybody go stock up on eggs. Eggs are good for 30 to 60 days in your refrigerator. I would go stock up on eggs and I would stock up on egg powder, like whole egg powder. If you make a lot of scrambled eggs, stock up on a whole bunch of whole egg powder. All you gotta do is rehydrate and you can cook it into scrambled eggs. Eggs are gonna go up again. I'm gonna tell you, I think that Probably by the spring, you're going to see like $10 a dozen for the cheapo eggs in the grocery and store. And it's not a something... Bird, another round of bird flu. They just wiped out another, was it like 1.6 million chickens or something like that? I so don't want to... Eggs are going up more. To live in a climate of no, fear. No, but I'm telling you, go get some more. But we're going to be responsible. The yeah. responsible thing to do would be like have... Like, have a plan. We eat a lot of eggs. Yeah. That's why we've got so, so many chickens in the backyard. You you can run to Costco and buy those five dozen eggs for whatever, even if it's like 20 bucks. They're going to last, they will last in your refrigerator for a good 30 to 60 days. They're good past the date on there. Honestly, eggs are good for about 60 days from the time they go into that carton. Oh, I'm going to, to Highland Honeys. I raise chickens, quail, turkeys, and guineas. And that's a great reminder. Thank you for saying that because people have asked like in beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, can I eat other eggs besides chicken Any eggs? eggs? Any eggs. Yep. Absolutely. Any eggs, eggs is all the eggs. Uh, Kayla said, I'm originally from Long Island, New York, right now living in South Georgia, but could throw a rock and it would land in Florida. We're in so Long Island. From, I'm from Long Beach. That's where I grew up. Uh, Radical Z said dairy was fine, beef, butter, bacon, and egg ferreted out a shrimp allergy. How interesting. And that, that could be very serious. It's, I know that it is tough. It is a lot of work to, to be patient for, uh, an elimination of some sort. But w on the other side of that tough challenge for yourself is real data collection. It is very nice to actually know what inflames you or upsets you instead of constantly guessing, is it this, is it that? We have a friend that actually moved to Arizona now, but she was constantly getting put into the hospital, having terrible problems. And she had to do a very severe elimination diet to finally find out what she was 
super allergic to? Cilantro. How in the world was she going to find, I mean, it was actually placing a pause on her finishing college because when she got sick and was hospitalized with this allergy, it was, it was so severe, it was really causing a problem in her life. Once she did the elimination and found out it was a cilantro, she is now like thriving and right. doing really well. But it took that like very, I mean, frustrating process of elimination, but worth it now. Cher, how do you guys feel about the kind of keto Dr. Westman teachers? I love Dr. Westman. I love He's Dr. Like the Westman. Godfather of keto. He's so amazing. Does Dr. Westman have the best form of keto? No. Does Dr. Berry have the best form of keto? No. Does Dr. Boz have the best form of keto? No. Who has the best form of keto? The you one do. that is sustainable and works for you. Because everybody is different. That's why I don't believe in counting macros. I don't, I don't believe in counting calories. I was listening to a great uh, podcast today. It was actually with a doctor who's really, he, he's really, he's an, epidemi an epidemiologist. And he was talking about, and I thought I it was think very I could say interesting. say my title. So one of the things he was talking about was, why is it when you have a set of twins, this is what got him into studying epidemiology. When you have a set of twins, everything for twins is identical. Like we're not talking about just like paternal twins. We're talking about like identical twins. Okay. Okay. Why? So not Max and Ruth. Right. No, just identical fraternal. twins. Everything in them is the same. So why does many times one twin get a disease and another one doesn't if every single thing in them is the same? And he said, because what he's learned in his research is there's one thing that is different hmm. and that is their gut biome. Wow. And so your gut biome is everything. But he was really talking about how there is not one study, not one study. So listen, if for people who think, swear by counting calories, there is not one study that proves counting calories is a way to lose and maintain weight long-term. Wow. That you will lose weight in the first two or three weeks when you Move eliminate calories. However, you will quickly have your body adapt because it's that smart and it will slow down its metabolism. And so... Because there is no way of knowing how many calories you need, no macro calculator can tell you, nothing can tell you. There is no way of even knowing how good is your metabolism. There's really no accurate way to know what is your basal metabolic rate, which is the minimum calories that your body needs to operate. You can sort of guess by like getting a DEXA scan, which can tell you this is what your basal metabolic rate should be based on your muscle mass and how much fat and bone density and all that. However, what it cannot take into effect is, have you slowed down your metabolism from severely under eating? What is your activity level? All of those things. So the only way to really know is to test yourself. So Dr. Westman could have a version of keto that works great for one person, but will completely derail another person. I completely agree with him with don't fret the small stuff. But again, depending on how damaged you are, you may have to like wind things in. I think a lot of times when somebody get first gets started on keto, it's very easy to eat a lot of fat bombs and a lot of mug cakes and even some keto treats and still have a lot of success. Why? You're you're transitioning from eating a completely garbage yes. diet to eating a pretty whole food diet, even if you're adding in a few extra treats. So your body's automatically, you're not giving a sugar. So your body's automatically going to adapt and lose weight. But as time goes on, you will have to rein that in. But that makes sense, right? Like I, there was a time when I had 120 pounds to lose and had severe metabolic disease. And as I've lost weight and gotten healthier, it makes sense that my needs would evolve, right? right? That the things that I need to focus on, my, my focus would change, right? Like, and you continue to evolve. And I'm thankful for that, right? Like, we're not afraid of change. When we begin a, a keto way of life, we begin in a great big change. Right. So I, we're not opposed to change. We're not those people that like can't change. We're teachable, we're Every, malleable. No, no person out there 
in on social media, nobody has the perfect keto diet or carnivore diet. Nobody. Because it's specific to them. I will be honest. Why does 80-20 work for some people? Because they were under eating so much. And when you increase the fat, you start giving your body more fuel and your body's metabolism speeds up. It's not, I'm not saying always, but many times when you have somebody who was, they were eating 1200 calories. You said, well, you need to eat 80% fat. So you start adding in butter and eating a stick of butter a day to increase that fat. What are you doing? You're giving yourself more fuel. Your body's metabolism speeds up and it ramps things going. It's not necessarily the magic of eating a whole ton more fat. It's you're giving your body more fuel and it will increase its metabolism from there. But for some people, that won't work. It'll make them gain weight. Everybody is different and you have to figure out what works for you. Yeah. You do want to keep it as clean as possible, especially if you're trying to fix a whole bunch of metabolic disease and stuff. Exactly. Yeah, Janice is right. Dr. Westman's dealing with sick people. Yeah. And just the same thing with Dr. Ba. She's She is really dealing with some very, very sick people that have a hard time getting into ketosis. Everybody's sick. That's why we will always stand by where is the best place to start 100 grams, 100 to 150 grams of protein, 100 to 150 grams of fat, and then increase your fat from there. I personally believe nobody should be eating less than 100 grams of protein. If you're trying to do 80-20, start with 100 grams of protein and increase your fat from there until you get 80% of your fat, of 80% of your calories coming from fat. But just to let you know, if you eat a ribeye, a ribeye alone is like 73% fat if you just eat a ribeye steak. So you don't need to eat much. Eat a ribeye steak, put one tablespoon of butter, Boom. you're over 80% of your calories from fat right there. But that's where you start. And then how much fat should you add? Adjust from there for your own personal body. Hey, Caboodle Bry. Chris said, Joe happens to have a packet of keto chow in his lap. It's not weird. It's not in my lap. It's sitting over no, here. No, but it's just funny that it's just like, woo So. Ooh, you boop something. Hi, hit the, and welcome hit back. Hit the wrong camera. Uh, Juju said, I hear my New York loud and clear in you. Sorry, you still have a New York accent. It, it changes. Because so, sometimes I throw Southern twang in there, which annoys Rachel. It was so funny because Anthony went through a lot of speech therapy when he was young. Yes. And um, in order for him to be able to say certain words, they sort of worked in a Boston accent into him. So he'd be like, Mom, do you got the keys? I got to get in the car. And I was like, who are you? I mean, and he was such a little person too, right? It was just like, okay, where did, did you just, did you just drive into Boston and you can't, you came back here? Is, is that what happened? Speech class. John said, coffee is a big issue for me. Only one experience is not enough, but I'm doing it. Congratulations. Way to go, John. I Catherine, love that. Catherine said that barbecue place is excellent. I ate there this summer. Oh, yeah, nice. that's how we found it. We were with Rachel's mom. Bodacious Barbecue I in love Orlando. I barbecue places, but I will not go to a barbecue place that doesn't sell meat by the pound. If they won't sell meat by the pound, we will literally walk we right out. We figured that that is, that's always a great bet. If you're looking for beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, I actually was talking to somebody this week that they're like, you know what? I'm making triple B and E very easy. Every single day, my, my treat for myself is I don't have to cook. I am just buying meat by the pounds. I go pick it up and I eat it. I'm like, hey, Matreza, that's what you're going to do? Coffee Love was it. definitely an unhappiness. Yeah. Everyone at the Keto Ohio uh, can attest the best companion, Ella, was suffering more than I did. It It's so hard. And, and a lot of times people will quit because they're like, I feel sick. Like, I, I feel I have a headache. I feel like a stomach ache. Two things are happening, especially if you were this, us ladies. A lot of times... We ladies are especially bad at not feeling full. And a lot of times when we start out on triple B and E and we start authentically allowing ourselves to get full in a meal, it we read it like nausea. Yeah. We're like, this is broken. I must be allergic to beef because like Nobody I don't feel good. To beef. There's no such thing That's not the holiday. issue. It's a combination of you're detoxing off carbohydrates. And you are detoxing off of caffeine because we incorporate more caffeine than we realize also. And then on top of that, you're you're getting full. And all of those things, when you first hit your body with that, the first thing the body does is throw a toddler tantrum. That's usually what happens. 
Okay, Joanna, I know it was asking Chris, but I'm gonna answer this. To add an egg to keto chart, should I whip it and add to the shaker bottle or whip it in a blender? I would mix it in whip a blender. It good. Also, if you are using raw egg in a keto chart, which I do, uh, I would not add the egg um, and then store the keto chow. Right. So I would... That's when you eat uh, immediately. Make up your keto chow with everything except for the egg for, you know, a day, two days, three days, a week in advance. And then when you're going to put a raw egg in there because you want the fat from the egg, then you would put it in like right before you drink it. So put it in in a blender and add it in that way and mix it up. But you don't want to have raw eggs sitting in that keto chow for two or three days. No, that's one that's, of those that's ones. That's not being safe. You can have different fat sources, but if you're going to use the egg for it, then yeah, yeah that's a that's a eat immediately. I have no issue with raw eggs. Salmonella is generally on the shell. But when it can is once you start exposing it and having it out. I like a lady says, do we bring our cross-country skis or snowshoes to the Utah meetup? I am trying to figure out what to pack. What to wear? Like, how cold will it be you in Utah? You only have X amount. You only have X amount of room. Well, we will have more room if I don't allow you to pack anything. Okay. Then I have double the space that I have now. Wife, mom, Mimi, just starting keto back. Will beef butter, bacon, and egg help me get into ketosis faster? Yes, but you don't need to. Right. Um, beef, butter, bacon, and egg is essentially, it is, ex it's, it's an elimination diet. It is a challenge, and it is really as, as low to zero carbs as you can get more so than carnivore because the only carbs that you are going to get on beef butter bacon and egg would be carbs that you might get if you're eating a liver carbs that you're going to get in the eggs because every egg has just less than one carb and carbs that you may get in your coffee but other than that it's essentially a zero carb meal plan so yes you would get into ketosis the fastest eating beef, butter, bacon, egg. Ooh. With that being said, if you are new to keto or if you've been off of keto for a really long time, I would not start with beef, butter, bacon, egg unless you are positive that you can maintain it. I would rather, the way we always tell people, if you're first getting started on keto, how do you start? The only thing you're going to worry about is eliminating carbs. You're going to eat as much as you want, as many times a day as you want. I don't care if you eat six ounces of cheese. I don't care if you have a half a cup of heavy whipping cream. You want to keep your carbs as low as possible, preferably under, tw preferably under 20 total. And I don't care if you eat 6,000 calories a day. For the first two weeks, you're just not eating carbohydrates. That's hard enough. It is hard enough. And I, I think about, like, I know we want to be really good at this, but I think about it in terms of, let's say you want your fourth grader to be really, like, proficient in math. You still have to go through the basics first. You don't say to them, like, I really want you to be so good at math that I'm going to, instead of giving you fourth grade math, we're going to give you pre-calc and have you do that because I really want you to be good at it. So it would really be good if you just hit the ground running with this. They're not going to understand it. They're just going to be frustrated by it and feel bad about themselves because they can't do it. But it's like, it's too, it's too advanced for just beginning. So if you are like coming into keto, that's enough just going from a standard american diet to not having like all of the carby sides that's a huge deal huge huge deal oh my gosh um joe said joe thank you i always use raw egg for my keto chow and always have it eat right away because i have the same feeling about raw egg as you do never thought to hold egg for the next day or so yeah make them in advance and just don't add the egg uh this way you get all the flavor infusion um, you get away, rid of any of the vitamin taste that you may get and just add the egg at the last second. Uh, I want to get through a few more of these before we get I off. really like 0%. Like this is Susie's and 0% vegan is really it. I would love to answer this one. Is there a difference between fasting and not eating? What a great question. For me, the answer is going to be what is your motivation? Well, before we get into that, is there a difference? It's the same thing. Not eating is fasting. Anytime you don't eat between meals, you are involving it, involved in a fast. Yeah. Our body is designed to do that. So that's the first part. Now, if you're going to fast, like you said, what is your motivation? for? Fasting? My motivation is so important to me. Even when utilizing a product that I love like Keto Chow. I love keto chow. I love keto chow so much. We've gone seven days and eat nothing but keto chow. I have omatted three keto chows in ice cream form 
in like an hour. I love keto chow. If you're using keto chow because it helps you get started, you enjoy the ice cream, it's something that you can make on the go, this is great. I want you to use keto chow. If you're using keto chow because you are afraid of allowing yourself to chew food because in the past you like binge ate or you had a real problem with interacting with food, I don't want you to answer that problem with keto chow. Well, like I'm, I'm going to take avoid. it a step further. And this I am opposed to eating keto chow for three meals a day as your sole source of nutrition to lose weight unless you have an issue like you're having mouth surgery or something like that. And I know Chris will even agree with me and he's the owner and creator of keto chow. I'm going to go this far. If you use keto chow as your sole source of nutrition three meals a day to lose weight, I can almost guarantee you you're gonna go you're gonna gain all the way back when you go off the of keto child. Why? You haven't dealt with your food issues yet. And the same thing because You'll lose weight. I'm because I'm running into this even in with coaching and talking to people and meeting people at conferences and being able to sit down and see an individual person and say, okay, they're 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 fixated on like intermittent fasting, which I think is great. I think there's benefits to it. But when we get down to what is your motivation? Why are you intermittent fasting? What is the reason? For some people, they're fasting to extremes because they are afraid of eating. Like, I don't want you being like, I can't be trusted to eat five days in a row. So I need to have two days of no eating and one day of eating because that would be better than three days of eating for me. Do you understand? Like, the motivation is the key. I would love to see you enjoying intermittent fasting. And like Joe's saying, every time you go to sleep, you are inadvertently intermittent fasting, right? Like, that time that you are not awake and you are not eating, you are, you're fasting, right? Your motivation is key though. I just want to make sure that people are fasting, intermittent fasting, extended day fasting for the right motivation. Otherwise, we can work ourselves into an eating disorder. Yeah. And I don't want us to trade one problem with food for another problem with food. Here's the thing, like intermittent fasting has some benefits, but can also cause problems like not consuming enough fuel, which slows down your metabolism. If you can go 12 to 14 hours between your last meal of the day and the first meal of the next day, you're doing great. If you are struggling, if you're only eating like 13, 14, 1500 calories a day and going, I just cannot eat anymore in my in my eating window, then you need to open your eating window a little bit. Yeah. And have three meals. The key is eat till you're full, two or three meals a day, and the key is don't snack. Don't wake up at two o'clock in the morning and have a piece of chocolate. That's like you stop eating two hours before you go to sleep. And then whenever you want to have your first meal the next day, whether it be the morning or it be in the afternoon, whatever it is. But once you, two hours before you go to sleep, nothing goes in your mouth until the next day. And, yeah. you, and you've just done an intermittent fast. That's and, what breakfast is. And it's we, breaking your fast. And we love fasting. We have actually led fasting, like extended fast. Like yeah. we've participated in like extended fast and things like that. So it's just important to remember, like we're always trying to kind of focused on the thought that the audience, everybody is on a different place in their keto journey. We're all like keto, but what that looks like in our past experience and what we're going through and where we're at right now in our life, it's gonna vary widely. So maybe you're like, I don't understand why people are trying to eliminate dairy. I don't have any problem with dairy. Well, it's that's an individual thing. And the same thing for like, maybe fasting comes super easy to you. Maybe daily movement comes super easy to you. But everybody is like in a different level. So that's, you know, kind of where we're at. Different people. Susie, what do you think about fat fast? Are they safe to do it for a week or two? For a week, I would say yes. For two weeks, no. I don't know why we need to do a fat fast. The concern that I have for fat fast is you're not consuming protein. Your body needs protein. Um, that is one of the places that like the PSMF came from because it was basically like having a fast but keeping the protein, but you're in, in eating almost no fat, which I don't... I, I don't think PMS, PSMF is good long-term. It's for severely obese people one to two days a week so that you would have a fast, but you're not sacrificing the protein. If you don't consume protein, your body is going to start eating away at your muscle for the amino acids. So I am not a huge fan of fat fasts other than maybe a few days. Just And again, 
at that point, what is it? It's a reset. Right. But you can also overconsume fat. You have to figure out how much fuel. Fat is a, is a fuel source for your body. And so if you're eating 3,000 calories of fat and you're never getting out of bed or you're working at a desk all day, you're going to gain weight if you're eating 3,000 calories worth of fat all day long. It, keto is not magical. It still comes down to how much are you moving. Exercise does not help you lose weight. There's no documentation that exercise helps you lose weight. Building muscle can help you lose weight or maintain weight loss long term. Exercise is great for your heart and stuff, but not for losing weight. You, but you need it'll help you keep weight off because you're moving more. Uh, JC Black, do you know what time the dinner is going to be? I believe it's six thirty. Long drive and can't uh, spend the night because of all the animals. Love to come. Yeah, definitely send a message to just like confirm things with Chris. It's Mighty Meetup 2023 at gmail.com. We'd love to see you there. And then she can get into more of the details of like what time we're like going to be at the uh the event, but I believe it's 6.30. Christina said, I've been on the line diet for five days now. I'm noticing digestive issues have improved considerably awesome. with carnivore. Heal my gut from SIBO, no bloat, and the rash on my leg as a spirit. That is fantastic. And that's the, the lion diet is just the most severe elimination diet out there where it's beef and salt. That's it. Yeah. No coffee, nothing. Chris, yes, I agree with Joe about chocolate peanut butter. I made a lot of regular chocolate in the creamy though. Yeah. Chocolate is good too. Chocolate the, is the, really the, good. That chocolate peanut butter is amazing. Regular, the peanut butter. There's like just peanut butter keto chocolate. Yes, That's really is. delicious too in the in, as an ice cream. Ludo said I want pickle juice without the pickles. I love pickle juice. I, I will pickle juice all day long. And I'm going to tell you right now, the freeze-dried pickles may be my favorite thing that we've discovered accidentally with all of our little trials uh kayla said made joe and rachel's keto chop pancakes Thank the other day you. with caramel macchiato they were so delicious i'm so glad that you liked them that is a really delicious recipe i really love that too jennifer said if i win the lottery i'm buying a two-man submarine in the neiman marcus catalog it's only two million dollars are you serious what it, that almost sounds like one of those sky mall magazines right later it's like Here's all this extravagant stuff that you didn't even know that you needed. Like, a submarine? Really? Like, shouldn't you have some sort of, like, expertise with a submarine before you purchase a submarine? I guess if you can afford a submarine, you probably can also afford a submarine captain that would help you. Jamie said, I'm excited for you, Rachel. I dove in Cozumel twice. The water's so clear. The fish are beautiful. I well, saw a wedding on my second dive. Joe quit telling her. Yeah, Here's the thing. seriously. Jamie, I you're came right. home. She's like, Tell let him. me see the footage. And I show her the footage. She's like, I don't, what? What? I mean, so that was a little bit on that as her. He's looking, he's looking at me like, eh, eh. And I'm like, oh, oh. Kathy said, Rachel, remember, you are big and scary to see life. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, like sharks don't really want to bother you unless you... I wouldn't mess with me. Wear a black wetsuit. Would you mess with and me? And swim with the seals in the Great Barrier Reef. I am tough as they come. The warden's here. Said I love hey, the water, Shelley. but after nearly dying from snorkeling adventure, not sure I want a chance. Same for my best friend. Snorkeling is more dangerous than scuba. Shelly, my best friend, like growing up, had the same thing. She almost drowned during a snorkeling adventure at John Pennecamp, like, which is like a field trip that all of the kids like tend to go on. We've been to John Pennecamp, and it's like, she's like, I almost drowned like snorkeling on a school I field trip. I, that's dive. it for me. I'm done. I can't wait for us to dive there. Um, and that that's you have scuba and dive, so it's not very scuba. deep down. But yes, yeah, snorkeling actually could be more dangerous. Jackie said we used 18 eggs between us for dinner and about two and a half to three pounds of bacon. Way to go. Okay, we are going to get off. It's 9.45. I can't believe time flew. Because you're having fun. <laughs> you're not scared. We're not scared right now. So it's like, wow, it just blew by. Um, any announcements? Saturday, we will probably have a uh, channel supporter possibly. live stream. Yes, possibly. So make sure you, uh, and we'll post about that inside of Mighty Networks and for the few people who are still on Patreon. Yeah. We'll to close down that Patreon stuff. But um, yeah, so we'll, we will do that probably on Saturday. And then on Monday, we will have Keto on the Couch. Beyond the Couch. Keto Beyond the Couch. We're not going to do it on the couch. Live. Beyond. Live, right? We're going yeah. live. Everybody have a great night. We love you. Bye.